This is the Pixel Tablet or Pixel Tablet Home, whatever you want to call it. This is the Pixel Tablet. And this is what we've been waiting for in terms of tablets from Google. And does it live up to the hype? Well, let's find out. Hey guys, Thunder E here, and uh, welcome to my full review of the Pixel Tablet. Now, this really isn't a tablet. I'll call it the new Google Home because this is an 11 inch tablet with a nice Google Home dock. And this is where it shines. And on the tablet side, this is where the device doesn't actually excel as I would like. So let's start off with the specs hardware and then we move on to what we like and we don't like. First off, we've got an 11 inch display. Uh, it's a 60 Hertz display. And the tablet also comes with its own home dock. Now, if I hold it up for you, this is what it looks like behind. You can see it's separated here. Uh, it comes in three colors, porcelain, hazel, and um, I just can't remember the name of the last color, but it's all on screen there for you. And as you can see behind it, there are pogo pins. There's a pogo pin connector on the back of the tablet, and there is one on the dock, allowing them to come together like so. Very easy and simple. I do like the fabric finish on the dock itself, which has a single port for the charging. I wish it was USB type C, but it's a proprietary port. The Google logo on there and built in speakers. And that's where you find the key difference with this tablet here. It's powered by the Tensor 2 chipset, uh, which we know in terms of performance, you've got uh, two cameras built in on the rear and in the front. And you've got something that looks like a Google Home dock, pretty much an 11 inch size dock. So what does it mean for use case? Well, you know, I think this is a device that is meant to be stationary more than mobile around the home. Now, I was able to use the, the uh, Pixel tablet as a Google Home, uh, 11 inch Google Home in different parts of my home. And in that scenario, it worked out pretty well because of course you've got the fluidity of you know, Google Assistant built into it, using that pretty well. And you've also got the updated Google Home app allowing you to navigate and manage all your smart home um, appliances and features quite effectively. And that actually works out very, very well, especially of course using your Google Assistant uh, with this. Now, when it comes to using it as a tablet, you can detach it away uh, from the dock quite easily and you can move around your home, whether you're on your couch, you're sitting down at a table and use it as a tablet. This is where some of those deficiencies come in. In terms of battery life, that's the first thing I'll say is that the battery life on this was not good. Now, normally for a tablet, I expect at least minimum around 10 hours of battery life. I didn't get 10 hours of battery life because also the standby time of battery life was pretty poor. And when I did some gaming on here, it, my battery life cut down by 20% uh, for an hour of gaming. So you can see how extensive that actually uh, degrades over time. Speaking of gaming, we know what the Tensor uh, G2 chip, chip can do in terms of gaming. And of course you can play games like Call of Duty Mobile quite well, easily whether you're playing on uh, with just the tablet itself or connected to the dock, you can do that as well. But I also went ahead and connected Xbox Game Pass and it's actually fun playing Game Pass games on here because you do get that extra benefit of the speakers. Speaking of that, let's take a quick listen to the speakers and how well they sound with the dock and then on just the tablet on its own. Now there's a clear difference between the audio quality between a docked in and audio quality without. And I can, you can clearly tell that with the dock, it sounds really good, very rich, Without the dock, it's much flat and thinner in terms of the audio, whether you're gaming or whether you're listening to just music as we did there with those samples. Now, as you hear me talk about this, there's really nothing super exciting I'm stating about this tablet, other than the fact that it is a Google Home device. That's what I look at it as. And for Google Home dock, it does that functionality well. But as a tablet and taking it on the road, I don't see the benefits of it. And it's hard for me to fully recommend it, especially at this price point of 499. 
Now, yes, you've got a bigger screen size, especially if you're using a home and using all those Google apps, whether you're using you know, YouTube TV or you're watching YouTube on its own content wise, that stuff looks great, but it doesn't give you the full functionality. And on the other side, I'm also disappointed I haven't seen anything software wise for Google to say, hey, pick up an Android tablet. We know what the competitor does with Apple in terms of their tablets and how apps are optimized and things are focused. This is not necessarily the case. And this really is a glorified Google Home tablet. Um, and that's what I think it pretty much is where you can pick it up from time to time and look at different things and enjoy it that way. So let me know what you think, guys. Do you think it's worth to pick it up or do you think, nah, not so much? Leave your thoughts down below. If you want to pick it up, use our link down below. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.